Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. I have something different for you today. We are going to be combining arts and crafts with sewing. This piece of muslin is for the sewing part and this is for the arts and crafts part. A glue stick. I have been wanting to use a glue stick with fabric for a long time but I never would get around to buying a glue stick. I got these at Walmart for 25 cents for two and I was able to order that with my groceries so somebody actually shopped for this for me <laughs> I'll have a link down below check it out see if they're 25 cents at your Walmart too alright um, before I forget please subscribe to this channel if you like anything here that I did go check out the links in my description box for TikTok, my penny auctions on eBay, Skylar's stuff, all that shit. Oh, and if you like that I just threw the word shit into this video, then you're my kind of person, and obviously I want you to subscribe. I have to think for a second. I'm partially prepared. My current cutting mat does not have a grid on the back. So I use that as my craft side, which is super cool. I have a piece of fabric here. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Whatever size you want to use. Um, okay, whatever finished size you want for your crazy quilt block, I would like add at least an inch to that. So if you want an 8 inch square, go with a 9 inch square because we're going to be trimming. And it allows you to not, you know, be perfect on the edges. And um, here's what we're going to do. So this is our foundation for the crazy quilt block. We're going to take fabric strips. They can be very scrappy strips, like some of the ones that I have on my penny auctions. They don't have to be even. It's good if you do have at least one straight edge. But that's all you need is one straight edge. And we're going to hem these. And yes, this is washable. I'm assuming all uh, glue sticks or white glue is washable. You can use white glue, but this is way less messy. Uh, make sure it's washable. And then when your project is done, you can throw it in the wash and you're good. So I'm just going to put some of this on one edge, whatever edge is straightest. And if you don't have a straight edge, well, just trim it, make it straight. My table is rolling, um, is crooked, so everything rolls. And then I'm just going to press this down. Easy as that. Now, if you want, you can go ahead and press this after it's folded if you want a really flat, crisp edge, but you don't have to do that. Now, let's do this little part two. Oh, do I have my centerpiece that I want? I'll find that. All right, so let's do this one again just to show you. I'm going to take this edge, slobber on some glue stick. I need to put something on there so it stops rolling. It drives me crazy. Like that. Now you can see this one is even lifted a little bit. That's all right. doesn't matter. It's just basically hold it down. And that's going to be our finished edge. And now you can see I did a whole bunch of these strips. These are all hemmed. And I already have one piece made. So I'm going to try to kind of a little bit match the other block that I made. Um, and I'll show you them at the end. I want you to watch me do it first before I show you the finished product. So I'm using most of the same prints. Okay, crazy quilt part. Very easy. Let's uh, remove this glue stick for right now. And I'm going to just cut a piece for my center. I happened to do a four-sided initial block, so I'm going with that too in this video uh, also. It, this did not have to be hemmed. It happens that this one is hemmed, that's okay. But your first piece does not have to be hemmed. Now we're just going to build around it. Like I can put a piece there. I need my roly-poly glue stick again. I'm just going to put the glue on the part that I hemmed. And if you want you can secure this on your muslin too. And you can go wonky with it. It doesn't have to be centered. Like that. Now, there's not too much sticking off here, so I'm good with that. Now, let's see. I'm going to try using my shorter pieces first. So let's put this guy right here. I'm going to move it, so I really want to make sure that I get the flower. Now, you can see I can trim this if I want to. 
let's put some glue on the hem. So what we're doing is we're overlapping with that finished edge. Another piece. I like this. And you can go wonky at any time. And even if you were to go really wonky and this is sticking out, like fabric is sticking out on the other side, that's okay because it will get covered. Now this raw edge, it doesn't matter if it's crooked, thready, whatever, because it's going to be covered. I just think this is so cool. So what we're doing is we are designing our entire crazy quilt block at our craft table. And I'm going to try to save some of these really long strips um, for the, you know, as we go around. You need longer strips. Okay, I think you get the idea. Let me just put this on fast speed, and I'm going to continue until this piece is completely covered. I'm just going to go around and around and around. I have everything covered. All you want to do is make sure you cover, um, you go beyond your foundation. If you don't by a little bit, that's okay, because like I said, we will be trimming this. In fact, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to trim it first. I found that worked best for me before, and I will take you to the machine because I'm going to show you how I'm going to secure all of this with stitching. So I'm going to just uh, trim, I believe my other one was an 8 inch square. Actually, I'm not going to trim to 8 inches yet. I'm going to trim the excess off though. And I'm going to keep it the size of this foundation. I, I still want wiggle room at this point. So I'm just going to cut all that crap off. So let's go to the machine. Here is how I am going to do this. You can do this any way you want. At first I was thinking I could just stitch and then go, you know, around and just, you know, like kind of go around and around. But you have to do some backtracking. Like if I'm coming up here and I want to turn this corner, well then this piece isn't stitched. You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? So what I'm doing is I am going to stitch all the way across in each direction, even if I don't need to. Now, it does mean that I'm going to have white thread showing, but I kind of like it. But the thing is, is you can use any color thread you want. If you don't really want it to show much, use a kind of a light gray that goes in and blends in with everything. But you, if you want a color up to pop, you could use a totally different color thread like bright red or whatever and you could also use decorative stitching I'm doing straight stitching white thread and I'm just going to go across like see for instance here this piece only goes from here to here but I'm going to start way up here and I'm going to go down I'm just going to eyeball it hang on that's for my mother I just needed for it to stop ringing so let me just get started. I'm going to go in this direction. I'm going to turn and go in that direction. And I'm going to go up and down. So you can see I just stitched very close to the edge. And I don't actually have to turn it. I'm just going to do the next one. And I'm going to um, now do this one. And like I said, I'm going to start up here and then I'm going to go down and hit that blue heart fabric. Don't worry about eyeballing that. You're going to do fine. 
And even though that fabric ends here, I'm going to go right off the edge. And again, for this purple-ish one, I'm starting way up here and going all the way down. If you really need help with the eyeballing, you know, you can lay a ruler down and say, okay, that's my line. I'm going to start like right there. Oops, I have one more in this direction, this little guy. So again, I'm starting way up here, going all the way down. Now this guy. Oh my goodness. My camera was off for part of that. Okay, sorry about that. I do want to show you that. See here? I didn't quite get these two pieces connected, but since my square is much bigger than the, you know, the final size, I'm just going to be sure that when I trim to eight inches that I'm going to trim that so that part is cut off. That's why you want wiggle room. Another thing I wanted to mention is that if I see ideas from other videos, I mean, if there's like a million videos and I've seen it a million times, I will just say things like, I've seen this be done before and here's my spin on it. I have not ever seen anybody do it this way with the gluing and the sewing it down at, after the fact. That doesn't mean it hasn't been done. If I would have seen it, and if I see just one video or two that inspire me, I always link to them down below. But um, this, I just thought of it, I thought of it for a different project, but once I started gluing fabric strips, hemming them that way, I thought of this. So we're starting with this. Okay, I have all my lines in this direction. And you can see, like, on the darker piece down here, you can see the white lines. I don't care. I still like it. I think it's the easiest way to do this and to get all your, you know, your hems stitched down. Now I'm going to go all in this direction. And when you're starting from far away, like this is the line I'm aiming for, when you get a, you know, closer to it, if you're not in the right position that you want to be in, you can make a curvy line. And there's no law saying you can't do that. I love lines. I like lines on fabric. And I love not having to try to backtrack to uh, get every hem down. I do think I've gotten every hem down. Let's go trim this. Like I mentioned, I'm going to look at my edges and see is there some thing that needs more work and I want to be able to cut this off. So I'm going to do this and I want to make sure I can I still get eight inches. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Perfect. I'm going to cut this off and turn it now here. Look, look how awesome this is, and it was so easy. One last thing that I like to do is I am going to go around and do a stay stitch all the way around, very close to the edge, like maybe an eighth of an inch in, so that when these are put together, that would be caught in the seam allowance. And I'm not going to take you to the sewing machine for that. I'm just going all the way around. I'm so excited about doing it this way. You don't know how much I love just being able to plan the whole quilt block while I'm sitting at my craft table and using a frigging glue stick. I'm so happy. All right, this is the one that I made today, and this is the one that I made the other day. And just to make them uh, cohesive, I used the same centers. You certainly don't have to do that. And this is a really good place for like fussy cutting something like a little teddy bear or something in the center. And then I did use most of the same prints, but not all the same prints. I think, you know, one might be in one that's not in the other. How cool is that? I absolutely love it.
Now normally I put my blocks on eBay as a penny auction, but now I really want to try hard to turn them into something and it gives me another video idea. So uh, always do go check out my penny auctions though because if like this makes it later to eBay just as is, well it might be there. So um, you know just like my past projects I hang on to them for a little while and if I think I'm never going to get around to making anything with them then I put them on eBay. All right thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you try it. Once again, let me show you, you know, the, the lines um, that you see on that darker fabric. You can pick whatever thread color you like. My preference would not have been white, but um, I would probably like to have black. I like pops of color like that, but I didn't want to change my thread. Huh? Who wants to do that? Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, like I said. Go look at the links down below. I insist. I'll be back with more soon. Bye!